previously on X-Men 97 Reaction. Remy, no! <laughs> Hello, hooligans. Welcome to RCA Reacts. My name is Robert Adams, and I know I haven't been here for a while. There's a reason why. I'll explain it in another video at some point, but yeah, that's gonna be a big one. Moving on. A couple of weeks ago, I did a reaction to the X-Men 97 trailer that came out, and I'm super excited. I'm a big X-Men the Animated Series fan. It's one of the one of the foundational cartoons that I watched all the time growing up as a kid. Absolutely love it, so I was eager for the show. I just haven't done, like, reaction videos yet, because typically I, I like sitting here watching movies, TV shows, and just kind of like relaxing way back here and just vegging out and it's kind of hard to film a reaction like this you don't want to see someone sit here you want someone that's up here like this that's in the action that's in involved in the show and what the show is doing and that's not typically how i watch things so i'm trying something new here uh given how amazing last week's episode was i was like ah maybe i need to be reacting to these things so here we are i'm gonna react to this this is the newest episode which looks like is life death part two this is based off of a storyline from uncanny x-men number 186 and 187 way back in the day uh i'll be honest this is a storyline that i thought was kind of dull and boring because i was a kid and this involves love and wars and personal feelings and emotions and yeah as a kid that wasn't something i'm interested in as an adult this is fantastic. This is amazing. I love exploring these depths of these characters that I grew up loving. So I love the fact that I'm being able to revisit this as an adult and see if maybe I have a better appreciation for it. Now, with that being said, I do also understand that there's a little bit of a difference in how these storylines translate from the comics to the cartoon. The original X-Men the Animated Series did a phenomenal job of adapting some very popular stories. Days of Future Past, The Phoenix Saga, The Dark Phoenix Saga. All of these trans translated over to the animated series and I feel like they did a pretty good job. There's a couple of bit of changes that they had to make. You had stuff like you can't have certain levels of violence, uh, like Magneto's background with like the Nazis and World War II, all that was toned down because we can't mention the Nazis in a kid's TV show, just can't do it. So I love the fact that X-Men 97 has been a little bit more progressive, a little bit more adult. It's like they, they are catering these episodes to people who grew up with the animated series who are now adults and would like to see their X-Men from the animated series with just a little bit more adult themes to them. So I very much appreciate that and I'm eager to see what they do with this life death story. Uh, we got part one on the tail end of the Motendo episode a couple of weeks ago. I notice already some changes to it, like Storm loses her powers in the comics due to like the neutralizer or whatever, while this cartoon is setting it up that uh, like Forge, who in the comics was responsible for creating the neutralizer, in the cartoon, he is somewhat responsible for creating those mut mutant control dampening collars that they used on, like, Slave Island, and in multiple places in this series they've been using them. They've even used them in the movie, so, I mean, Forge is very busy, but he basically created the the basics of that collar and then was repurposed and readapted by Dr. Gottfried Adler, uh, or Mystique, depending on <laughs> who you ask. If you watch the original X-Men the Animated Series, a little bit of a puzzle on that. Uh, in the Life Death Part 1 of X-Men 97, there was a photo of Forge with Dr. Gottfried Adler, and also a little piece of Bastion, who I believe is going to come back into play towards the end of this season, but that is yet to be seen, and we'll talk more about Bastion if I decide to continue doing more of these reactions. Either way, that's enough of me yapping about my love for this. Let's Let's jump into this reaction. Previously on X Men. Oh, they do it too. God, that was devastating. I wish I recorded the reaction last week. This episode broke me. It broke everyone. Like it was all over Twitter. Remember it. Remember it. Such a good line. I can't feel you. No. Yeah, see, <laughs> we're getting a lot more, like, adult-type language and blood in this. I like I like how they're doing this so far. It's a different beginning. There we go. What kind of deviant that only eats tuna fresh out of the can skips the intro to this <laughs> to the show? Oh, they put Nightcrawler in there. Nice. 
I like the little changes they do. There's Master Mold and Nimrod. So there's hinting at Bastion some more. God, they do such a good job with this show. This is not Texas. Look at the Shi'ar versus the Kree. Frickin' Ronin. Should have a dance-off, bro. I always thought, like, Gladiator was way too overpowered. <laughs> Especially when he, uh, what was it, that old X-Men animated series episode where he sent, like, Juggernaut flying? <laughs> <Shall suffer. laughs> Ronin, honey. Oh, Vulcan. They put Vulcan in this? Oh. We're gonna get an update with what's happened to Xavier since the end of the animated series. In his greatest feat yet. Is that the Equisapiens from, uh, Sorry to Bother You? <laughs> Didn't your brother nearly destroy the universe with the Emkron crystal? <laughs> Look, if you're gonna be a smart aleck... Much like my legs in this armor's exoskeleton. That explains it. I was about to ask why is he walking, but I knew if I just shut up and not say anything, just wait a minute, they'll tell me. Plus, he's worn exoskeletons in the comics before, so... This isn't, like, anything new. <laughs> Forge made his bed. Let him die in it. All lives deserve saving. I like how the the voice of the adversary here uh, is the same. It's the same voice actress who's doing the voice of Storm, who did the original voice of Storm in the original animated series. Do not fear death. Uh, I know. Sort of claustrophobia. As you feel your power, sought refuge with oh, monotone that's just scary. Yeah. She seemed to handle the claustrophobia a little bit better in this than she did in the original series. To the desert, demon! Depart and be gone! <laughs> when did Forge become Doctor Strange? I am your pet. Hmm. Not an entirely displeasing thought. Hush now, beloved. You may bark later. Ooh. <laughs> Adult content, yo. <laughs> You can bark later. <laughs> I respect you speaking the quiet part out loud, Death Bird. So let's speak plain. <laughs> I respect you saying the inside voice out loud. Xavier would see his Milky Way ghetto become our new throne world. <laughs> Milky Way ghetto? I like where no matter where the X-Men go, it's always about racism in some form. <laughs> I mean, they do a good job with getting that point across, in all honesty, but... Charles Xavier must purge all memories of Earth, and you, dear sister, must be the one to do it. But he's still a human. That doesn't change his DNA. <laughs> Even you know Deathbird's challenge goes too far. Her name is Deathbird. I mean, let's be honest. It's not like she's the one you could count on to bring the turkey to the Thanksgiving dinner. I mean... Well, her name's Deathbird, so she probably is bringing the turkey to the Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Snow Snake Tower. Isn't that the the mountain from Close Encounters of the Third Kind? <laughs> I know how you feel about tight spaces. But I need you to crawl into one. Nope. He seeks to ally us with Earth. My God, you are dramatic. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> My god, you are dramatic. Arrest this treacherous vulture, and any who dare to stand with her. <laughs> How many times has Deathbird, Deathbird been arrested? For, like, treason against Lalandra? Hear me. Class is now in session. Xavier put on the big boy pants. Did he even put him in a classroom and he's chewing an apple? That's great. Feeny! Feeny! And just in case you're wondering, yes, I do sit here and make these comments while I'm watching the show by myself. Storm, last stop. You pancaked by the pressure of existing. This is nightmare fuel. Oh, yeah. Here comes Storm. Mistress of the elements. There's neutralizer. Was Goddess of the environment. Tamping down my oh yeah. She's about to get pissed. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. 
Oh, they gave her like her 80s, the 70s, 80s comic book look. Nice. Oh, love it. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. Not an entirely unpleasant idea. Not an entirely unpleasant idea. There's so many double negatives. <laughs> They're finding out about last episode. From the crushed skulls that house inferior minds such as yours. Demerits. <laughs> it's the wrong, wrong answer, Deathbird. <laughs> the universe is very old, and all of us very young. Some damn good writing this show has. Good lord. I don't Heavens, no! think globes are supposed to do that. was weird what in the stars i must return to earth what sent that like psychic image it is time i return to my x-men roll credits huh no more <laughs> i gave you my dna to access that trask world. is this nimrod after him or i beg you don't take all the blame, Bolivar, and don't fret the oh. future. Sinister. As you place your faith in Sinister. <laughs> so, Sinister was behind what happened in Genosha in the last episode. Interesting. Again, I kind of like how they, they twist some of like these storylines, because stuff like what happened in Genosha, part of that was a part of uh, storylines in X-Men. Uh, basically, the, the main storyline I feel like is, oh, I can't remember if it was like E for Extinction, I believe? I might be wrong. Yeah, I think it is E for Exten Extinction, uh, which is... Uh, basically, they're attacked by Cassandra Nova. That's Xavier's like twin sister. I'm oversimplifying it. There's a lot more than that. She will be the villain, I believe, in uh, Deadpool and Wolverine coming out this summer. So we will see more probably about that. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if she doesn't. She she will make an appearance at the end of this season, I believe. I believe like the last few episodes of this season is like Tolerance is Extinction, so it sounds like they are playing on the E for Extinction storyline, so very likely we're going to get Cassandra Nova. Plus, what a way to hype her up before the Deadpool and Wolverine. People go into Deadpool and Wolverine knowing a little bit more about Cassandra Nova than if they knew nothing at all. Uh, this show is doing a phenomenal job. The writing, like I said, the writing on this is really good. All right, so that's Life, Death, Part 2. Um, I thought it was pretty good. It, I felt like it was at least a little bit more interesting than what I remember the original Life, Death comic book storyline being. So that's pretty good. And I, again, I like the fact that they're adapting these these popular storylines over to this animated format. Um, don't get me started on One Man's Worth. I don't feel like we will ever get a fully realized adaptation of the Age of Apocalypse, which is my favorite storyline from the X-Men comic books back when I was younger. I don't think we're ever going to fully get that in a movie or TV show. They've tried. They've tried numerous times. X-Men the animated series, One Man's Worth, there's definitely heavy nods to uh, Age of Apocalypse, if not some of the way the characters look. They were in their costumes from Age of Apocalypse. Uh, there was that Wolverine and the X-Men animated series in the mid-2000s after X-Men Evolution ended. And their second season was pushing towards Age of Apocalypse. But the show got cancelled. So, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever get that. But I like what they're doing here. I like the direction that they're going. Again, making this adult. So, those of us who grew up with the original X-Men animated series... We are just diving right into this, and I'm loving it. The animation looks good. The animation is very similar to <laughs> at least the first four seasons of X-Men the Animated Series. Um, when they switched the 
animation production house for that fifth season. It got a little weird, and I'm not a huge fan of that animation. I love that this is closer to the original, but it's just cleaner looking. Bolder lines. It, it, it just looks much better, but still playing off that same kind of idea. So it's really feeding into that nostalgia that I love about this show. So... Anyways, uh, overall, again, I like it. If this if this video is good, if y'all get a, like a lot of likes, comments, a lot of views, I will probably do more of these. Uh, this really wasn't that bad sitting here just reacting to the episode, so I was able to fairly fairly well enjoy this while still talking to you, giving y'all a, a true reaction to it. So we'll see. I might do some more of these, especially if they have any more episodes that are going to be as good as the episode last week. I can't wait. The series, or series, the season finale of this being that Tolerance is Extinction. Again, very likely that's going to be a big, huge deal. It looks like it's a three-part episode, so it will very likely involve Cassandra Nova. Uh, it's also going to probably, I'm guessing, it's also probably going to involve that character of Bastion that I was talking about. Bastion is a more upgraded Sentinel. He is an android, a robot, who's a combination of like Master Mold and Nimrod, who we saw at the beginning opening titles of this episode. Uh, so those two combined create that character, Bastion. His famous storyline in the comics was Operation zero tolerance so you've got that word tolerance and then you have the e for extinction tolerance is extinction i'm almost certain we're going to have something that plays in with both bastion and cassandra nova at the end of this season i can't wait it's going to be epic it's going to be awesome i can't wait to see what they do with that so we'll see i i would love to do some more reactions again if this one plays very well so that being said, that is the reaction for this episode. What did you think of this reaction and of this episode? Let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you hit that like button while you're down there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Again, I know I haven't put out videos over the past month, month and a half. I'm going to make a video kind of detailing why. Um, it's going to be probably the most personal video that I've ever made. So we'll see how many views that gets because... I mean, this is still a young channel for the most part. People don't know me unless you follow us over on Cinefanatics with my brother where we talk about movie stuff. And yeah, that was a weird, awkward plug in the middle of that. But yeah, go check out YouTube.com slash Cinefanatics if you want to see us talking about movies and reacting to trailers and whatnot. Lots of fun over there as well. But yes, come back here and yeah, I'm going to be making some more reaction content as I'm able to, as you'll soon see. So anyways, make sure you subscribe. Very much appreciate each and every person over here. Make sure you follow me on social media. I'm at RCA Reacts, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, TikTok. I will have TikTok uh, videos going up pretty soon. And yeah, I think that about does it. So thank you for watching. Again, very much appreciate each and every single person who watches these. I hope to see you on the next one. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>